Hello and welcome to MBKM Models. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow for more great aircraft documentaries and model build videos. I sold my soul for about five or six years ago. But this was the touring version of the SS100, so called because George Bruff himself guaranteed that the SS100 would do 100 miles an hour and often was accompanied with a sidecar. But as a cruiser, oh yes please. Now this bike may have been built in 1938, but even today it's incredible to ride. Its handling is impeccable, its engine is powerful and responsive, and you can cruise along happily at 60 miles an hour without any strain. A lot of classics don't quite live up to their legend when you ride them, but a Bruff always does. One man who knows the history of Bruff Superior inside out is our very own Sam Lovegrove. He's a world expert on restoring Bruffs and, like me, just can't get enough of them. What is so special about a Bruff Superior? Well, the original design by George Bruff you know, he was trying to build the highest quality motorcycle in the land. Uh, so he selected a culmination of the finest products and brought them all together and hand finished them, created his own frames. He was just trying to create a world beating machine. Now, how many Bruff Superiors were made, you know, and how many, vaguely, are in existence today? Yeah, I, th I think just north of 3,000 were made between 1919 and 1939. Uh, and nearly half of those exist today. And I think it's just north of a thousand that are complete and operable. Really? So it's quite a good survival rate. Isn't it? I mean, that's possibly linked to the initial purchase cost. Uh, was it re were they really expensive back in the day, obviously? Yeah, yeah, I think they were the most expensive machine you could, you could go out and find. And obviously, they were made famous by T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, yep. being passionate about them and ending up being killed on one. Lawrence of Arabia was Bruff's most famous client, but George himself was very much a motorcycling celebrity. George Bruff was also, he was king of spin for his day as well, you know, just always at the shows, always at the front of the Earl's Court show with the most exciting prototypes. He always had his cap on at a jaunty angle and a cheeky smile. And it's actually well known that uh, his cap was actually stitched. The panels were uneven shapes and sizes so that it sat in that jaunty way. Really? Yeah, he couldn't wear it straight. Hey, look, I'm like, <clears throat> what do you reckon? Hey, cap, jaunty angle, yeah. jaunty angle. Get I just it, need yeah. some talent and then I'll be sorted. Yeah, anyway, dream on, Henry. You're on Bruff produced his last bike in 1940 before turning his factory over to war work. The Bruff story, however, doesn't quite end there. A hundred years on from the first bike, there's a new Bruff in town, and in a while, I'm going to find out all about it. But first, a little more restoration. A couple of weeks ago, Alan Milliard helped me strip down the seat for my BSA. Now it's time to refurbish it, so I've come up to Brum, the home of BSA. Hey look, so I've got my seat base back from Bobby Dazzler, nicely painted, and also I brought along the cover for the original seat so Andy can match it. So well, welcome to Birmingham and welcome to my favourite seat restorer. For the last 40 years, Leighton's have been refurbing and restoring classic bike seats. They may be at the bottom end of the business, but thanks to them, hundreds of bikers are today sitting pretty on their vintage motorbikes. Bossman Andy has worked here since 1987. Are you ready for this? Yep. All right. So, we've got, that's the original one. Now, interestingly, it's got white piping. And this material, is that kind of still the vinyl that you use today, kind we of? We use something very, very similar. It's a bit more stretchy and softer, but basically the same. Because I was thinking grade. about that. How would you stretch that over... Oh, dear. There you go. How would you, you know? <laughs> yeah. How would you stretch that over with, the base? With great difficulty. I'd love to have seen the guys that used to trim the seats in the 50s. 
They would have had arms like Popeye, I reckon. <laughs> Do you reckon? Mm. OK, well, obviously, that's seen better days. All right, yeah. so the first thing is to get a template made and then cut round that template. And uh, Rondo over here is doing right that. The first stage of the process is to cut the vinyl for the seat cover. After 12 years in the job, Rhonda is an expert cutter. Have you got a British bike yourself? No. Oh, you should do, man. <laughs> spend your <laughs> life cutting the seats. You might as well spend a bit of time sitting on them. <laughs> hey. Over the years, Leighton's have built up a library of seat templates for every mark and model. If you have a look at all these different templates up here, you know, every single vintage motorcycle is basically covered here. Wow, look at them all. Plunger, probably BSA. Yeah, all together. After just 20 minutes, Ronda is finished. So that now Goes is the template. I can take that to Usha, can't I now? Usha. Right, so we cut out the seat base now and the sides, etc. And this all goes over here. Usha is the company's resident seamstress. She uses a heavy-duty industrial sewing machine to stitch it all together, taking particular care with the white piping. I'm starting to sound like a time and motion man, but just 15 minutes later... Usha, thank you so much. How fantastic. Right, so that is the second part of the process. Now to the final part with Andy. So, Andy, I've got one covered. Now, look, right, I've okay. noticed a little addendum. Oh, really? Hey, look at that. That's so cool. I love it. Nice Sets story. it off a bit, doesn't it? does it? set it off. So, do I just uh, put it the right way no, through, like no, that? No, no, OK, sorry, maybe. mate. I, I won't touch a thing. No. OK, so yeah. we've got the cover, we've got the base. Yeah. Is that the um, padding? That's the moulded foam we have moulded to the correct shape of the, the gold star. Wow, how cool is that? Arm, so, it's, it's, so it's basically about bringing those three elements together? Yeah. Right, mate, well, look, best yeah. of luck, son. OK. Andy's main tool is his tin of heat-resistant contact adhesive. He brushes it onto the seat base and the foam, and then, once the glue is tacked off, marries them together. And all we go back to... Back to front. front. Yeah. I don't know if it's the right way, but it's... Seems it's the your way, mate, way so to do it, yeah. It's your way, so it's got to be the right way, isn't yeah. it? Then after another dip into the glue pot, Andy wrestles the seat cover onto the base and its padding. Do you know what? I get a kick every time I see someone like you doing your trade, man. I'll tell you what it is, Andy, it's humbling for me to see you do something like that. I mean, it's every day for you, but for me, that skill of doing it, all of you in it, yes. yeah? Brilliant. Though the glue has done the heavy lifting, Andy finishes off by hammering clips in all around the edge to hold the cover in place. Then, after fitting the rubber blocks that protect the frame, it's all done. Here you go. Oh, Andy, will you please feast your eyes? That, to me anyway, mate, is a work of art. Thanks, mate. Legend as always. What a lovely thing, Andy. I'll tell you what, I can't wait to stick it on the bike, eh? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I've got to build it first. <laughs> <laughs> Give you something to own for, yeah, wouldn't it? Oh, mate, top, top job all round. Oh, yeah. Coming up, I road test the brand new Bruff Superior. This motorcycle is quite incredible to ride. And hear all about Zef Eisenberg's jet bike. You wouldn't expect a noise like that to come from a motorcycle. Welcome back to sunny Spain. I'm on the A461 from Valverde del Camino towards Arathena in northern Andalusia. It's a spectacular route which takes you past the Gossan Dam, a giant reservoir filled with psychedelic-looking water. It looks good from afar, but up close it's far from good, not the kind of lake I'd want to go fishing in. Riding further on, the colours calm down a little and you move into Andalusia's classic landscape of rolling hills and scrubby trees. The roads aren't quite as newly minted as you find in Portugal, but they're almost as empty. 
This is utterly beautiful and my idea of perfect motorcycling. We're about 30 kilometers away from Arancina and I don't really want it to come into view <laughs> because the temperature is perfect, the road surface is perfect. Let me tell you right, a lot of people who haven't ridden abroad and want to, you know, talk to me and I say, look right, there's the odd car that goes past, but once you're actually out in the countryside and out of the urban areas, the traffic that you have to deal with is so much less than what you're used to. If you can cope with riding in the UK, you know, riding here is absolute bliss. It's midday, it's mid-March, and sitting on this rock, it's the perfect temperature. But if you're riding here at this time, take a leather jacket because you get a little chilly in the mornings. I'll tell you something else to watch out for though. Uh, something that I wasn't expecting is I'm getting a face full of bugs with me open face lid. <laughs> but I'll tell you what man, riding these roads, what's not to like? As the road wends its way northwards, there are more beautiful sweeping bends and small towns to stop off at. Oh, I'll tell you what, I love the sun on my back here. And if you want an orange, there's plenty of them. And now we've been celebrating the 100th anniversary of Bruff Superior. Time now to bring things right up to date and have a look at their brand new SS100. And here it is, a bang up to date Bruff for the new millennium. La creme de la creme of prime <coughs> French engineering. The latest incarnation of the Bruff Superior, as this glossy promotional film shows, is being built in Toulouse in the south of France. Now, when I first heard that British motorcycling's most famous brand had been revived on the other side of the channel, I was a little sceptical. But to find out whether this could be an entente cordiale or something that stinks more than a round of camembert that's been in the boot of a Renault Clio for two months, I'm going to take it out for a spin. Living up to such a famous name is, as you can imagine, almost impossible. But after just a few miles, I begin to warm to this rather eccentric bike. It has a brand new 100 brake horsepower engine, a top speed of around 130 miles an hour, and a waiting list that's as long as Emmanuel Macron's face when Santa gave him a high-vis vest for Christmas. Wow. Well, happy birthday, Bruff Superior. Amazing the difference in a hundred years, but then again, amazing the similarities. I have to say, when I got on this bike, after looking at it for a while, I thought, oh, is it gonna be like an ironing board? Not a bit of it. This motorcycle is quite incredible to ride. Why? Well, because I'm an old man, I think, and I'm the target market. Now, because I guess you could call that V-twin an L-twin like the Ducatis. The vibration is minimal, but the power, well, it's more than probably I would ever want riding a Bruff Superior like this. The gearbox is sublime. You know, it's just softy, softy, and you can find neutral wherever you are, which is unheard of often uh, with bespoke motorcycles like this. I love the tank, and by the way, this is the traditional colours. You can get titanium, or you can get black. In fact, you can get anything you really want, because they will design a bike around you. The Speedo is glorious, and this little bikini fairing and headlamp, etc., is, I think, really cool and a bit crazy and very bespoke. The weird thing is, just like the girder forks on the old 1150, the headlights moving up and down as you're trundling along. This little fairing thing moves up and down as well, which is slightly disconcerting. But I love the tank, I love the bands on it, which is so Bruff Superior. And I actually love the rear end. The genius behind the new Bruff is Thierry Henriette, a Toulouse-based designer who has worked for everyone from Ducati to Honda to Triumph. 
Working in collaboration with Bruff's British owner, Mark Upham, he came up with his first designs in 2013 and began building Bruff's in earnest in 2016. Current plans are to build around 300 SS100s. You know what? A hundred years of development, and I think, for me, right, this motorcycle is actually growing on. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and until next time.